Thank you for joining me. This is Katie Whitledge with the Beyond the Technique podcast. Today, we're talking about build a successful bridal business. We have returning guest Jennifer Alvarez here. It's been a hot minute. Jennifer joined us back on episode 356, where we talked about maximizing your life behind the chair. Now we're going to kind of be talking to owners about maybe not being behind the chair and what kind of business potential you can have, especially if you provide bridal services. Before I bring Jennifer to the mic, I want to just tell you, if you're listening today, you can also watch today's episode on Beyond the Techniques YouTube channel. So go there, click subscribe, and you'll get notified every time a new video podcast launches. I will tell you that all of those episodes are raw and unedited, and it's always fun to see the faces behind the names. So let me tell you about my girl, Jennifer Alvarez. She has been in the industry and licensed since 2002, a salon owner since 2016 and an educator. She has studied at the Redken Exchange in New York City and Vidal Sassoon Academy in London and has had the privilege of studying with several celebrity artists and business coaches. As the Leo Passage Awards first recipient, she has won multiple photo shoot hair competitions and scholarships. From traveling the U.S. teaching with hair care companies to being a guest artist at beauty schools and salons, her experience and mentors have inspired her award-winning bridal company and salon. Jennifer's mission is to impact the beauty industry by empowering, inspiring, and educating others through her salon podcast, Beauty Business Game Changer, and her educational workshop. She is one to watch and one to listen to. So without further ado, help me welcome Jennifer Alvarez. Welcome to Beyond the Technique. Thank you so much, Katie, for having me back. Uh, this is just so fun. I love seeing your beautiful face and and you're just amazing. So this is super exciting for me. What I really appreciate is that we're both Midwestern and we have the same accent for once. Like, all right, <laughs> yeah. you can, you can tell that we are not from the coasts. We are right here in the mid Midwest. <laughs> um, you are beautiful too. You are wicked smart and you are such a driven go getter. I'm excited that you're here. I want to remind everybody listening kind of where you began. I mean, you've done so much and really to me kind of a short amount of time, like you've just gotten after it. What made you decide to get into the beauty industry to begin with? Well, I wasn't really good at school and I had a passion for creativity so math and science, not my jam. And I definitely enjoyed the makeup and hair and fashion. And growing up in a small town in the middle of the cornfield where it was mostly farmers, I really desired to be involved with more exciting things like fashion and beauty. I went to beauty school in high school and just, you know, hit the the pavement running into that direction where I felt like this is where my strengths are and my passion is. And I just wanted to try all the things to figure it out. Well, you've done a lot. What has been the most, I guess, your proudest accomplishment thus far? That I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in the industry. Um, yeah, gosh, man, I have so many great experiences. I I will say that Knowing the power and the purpose of having a great coach and mentor in your life is key, I believe, to finding out what's next and staying curious and knowing that there's always more to learn and that if you are the smartest person in the room, you're not in the right room and that you need to go find other people that can help bring you to new levels and new challenges in your life to explore all God's purpose that you have. Yeah. And I know that that's something that you like to do now is, is support and mentor and coach others. So for everybody listening, you need to go to the link in our show notes to check out Jennifer Jade .com and see all of the opportunities that you offer in coaching and even online courses that people can get instant access to. I love that you're doing that. I know that we're talking about bridal business today, but tell us about your bridal business. Tell us about Refined Beauty Boutique. 
Yes. So it first started out with a bridal business and I'll make a, I'll try to shorten the story as much as possible, but I had a lady come into the salon to consult about hair extensions. And along the way of developing this relationship during a consultation, she says, my daughter's getting married. Do you do hair and makeup? I'm like, yes, I do. And she's like, perfect. I'm going to send you some information. I'd like you to be our hair and makeup artist for a wedding. Well, I said yes, but at the same time, I've never done one. I didn't even have a bridal kit. And she sends me an email. Mind you, I live in the Chicagoland area and she wants to fly me to Catalina Island, California. Nine girls hair and makeup. I spent all the money before I even had it to buy a kit. I go out there, do this wedding with my husband. And um, and it was just such a success in my mind. I loved it so much that that was when I said the bridal the bridal business is going to be born. And I had no idea what I was doing, honestly. And it was in 2016 when I opened up a salon suite, still doing weddings. And it was mo- it was mostly based on doing weddings, but I knew that I needed to make money. So kept doing hair extensions, realized I hate working on my own. The salon suite is not my thing. I really loved working with people. So I started hiring some people realizing this is clarity that I'm on the right path. And we ended up finding a new space. And fast forward to today, we own the building. We have eight employees. We have um, a dozen um, independent bridal artists. And yeah, we just keep on rocking and rolling forward. Oh, that's so neat. And I know recently in in the last few months, you've been an educator, even at the America's Beauty Show with your bridal boot camp and and your bridal badass program that you offer. I'd love to just get a little glimpse into what have you done to build a successful bridal business? Like you mentioned, you didn't really know what you were doing at the beginning, but obviously you've done some things well and correctly. So tell us a bit about what you do to be successful. I'm not afraid to make mistakes. And I know that it's better to move forward and do something as opposed to waiting for it to be perfect. Because I'm constantly changing things in my business and saying, does this work? Does this not work? I'm really paying attention to the success or the failure of that, but not being afraid to fail. In the beginning, I definitely reached out to people in the community and the bridal industry to say, hey, do you have any advice for me? And going on location for photo shoots, watching people do makeup, watching people do hair, watching videos, um, finding the right mentors to help me with perfecting my craft and learning a little bit about what the bridal business is about. But I definitely would say that just a lot of mistakes and learning curves along the way. And I'm, I'm still not perfect, but we definitely have a lot more systems in place that keep us functioning well. Yeah. Tell us about some of your systems that you put in place for your bridal business. So some of my systems in place are being extremely transparent and clear about who our target market is and having all of that information accessible to potential customers. So That way we can really identify, is this the right fit for us? Having a bridal coordinator was like the best investment ever because I was getting really overwhelmed with taking all of these bridal phone calls and also realizing you are all, you're all asking the same questions. So creating a booklet with all of our information to prepare them of This is our pricing. This is what it looks like to work with us. And this is when your payments are due. Having those things in place prior to a bride even coming to us was really important. And I know in the beginning, a lot of, and I don't know, maybe you think differently, but companies that are hiding their prices, I think about me as a consumer, I have a budget, big or small. And so if I go to that person's website and I don't see their prices and I call, and I, and I realized, oh, you're not in my budget. I just wasted my time and now I wasted yours. So just going through things and, and realizing what is working and, and really understanding who our target market is was key for us. 
And if you can afford a bridal coordinator, do so and start. I basically say like, how do you create a system? Where's the problem at? And then create a system around that. So we have so many things in place now because we overcome so many issues in the past. And what kind of price point do you typically recommend for people out there that are really trying to grow their bridal business? I would say understanding what your demographic is. So in my demographic, uh, average household income is $135,000. So our price point is going to be based around the demographics and who we're serving. And also what what venues are we going to or what hotels are we going to? So clients that are getting ready, and there, there's nothing wrong with this, but if uh, clients are getting ready at like a, a Hilton hotel or at a venue that is, I don't know, there's, there's lots of different venues out there, but we are affiliated with these other hotels and venues so that we are attracting the right bride in that budget. Now in my hometown, I don't know what the average household income, but I would probably assume it's maybe closer to like 75,000. So you know, $75,000 versus $135,000, you have to understand what the demographic is and what your market is willing to pay. Um, I would say that it, right now we are, we just did a price increase for this year. So we do charge $110 for bride bridesmaids. And for our brides, it is anywhere from 190 to 250 per service. Um, and then we also have minimums because time is money. And also if I'm not on location, I want my team to feel like this is a financial beneficial partnership so that when they go on location to do hair and makeup, that they're walking away satisfied with money in their pocket and, and their soul filled, filled from doing something that they love. That is really neat and good advice on checking the market that you're in in order to price, what kind of value do you add to what you offer as compared to other places in your area that do bridal business? So my team always makes fun of me because I'm always thinking, what more can we add? They're like, why do you feel like you have to give something away to someone? I'm like, because I like that when I go to, I love going to nice restaurants and to um, hotels. My favorite hotel is the Ritz. And every time I go in there, they greet me by my name. They give me champagne. Um, they, they put champagne in my room with chocolate covered strawberries. They don't have to do that. I didn't pay for that. But this is why I constantly am going back to the Ritz because how they bring so much massive value. And I, I know I'm not the only person staying at the hotel. They make me feel like I am though. And how can I take that Ritz culture and implement that into my business and do that for my bride. So we do have a welcome bag that we give our client along with a, a touch-up kit that I think is absolutely adorable. And I always think to myself too, what is Instagrammable? So the more like be beautiful I can make it with all of our branding on it, that is not just like little cheap, stuff. Like I want to put something of value of that. And that's why we charge more for our service and high, have, have a higher minimum so that we can budget for those things. Tell me a bit about having like a minimum. So does that mean you have a minimum of like, we only work with parties of six or more? Is that what you mean? So when we have a minimum, I decided to make it a dollar amount because we have some clients that they might not have a huge wedding party. I myself as a bride had a destination wedding and I only, I didn't want anybody in my wedding, but I had my sister and my sister-in-law. So if I brought somebody on location and they had a minimum service, minimum like head count of six people, I, would, I wouldn't qualify, but yet I would pay the difference so that I could have that. So we do have a, for my bridal team artists, they have a minimum of $700 to go on location. Mine is a thousand for on location and any additional artists needed is an additional 400. So you don't necessarily have to have that specific head count. You just have to have that specific dollar amount um, to pay. Yeah. And how has 
the kind of merge between or the marriage between hair extensions and bridal really propelled your opportunities in your bridal business? So for our salon, we have a heavy focus on hair extensions. In fact, 30% of our total service revenue comes from our hair extension business. And that does not include supplies. That's just the actual labor fee. And we find that so many of our bridal clientele are seeking styles that their natural hair doesn't support that. So by offering them, what else can we offer them, right? This is maximizing uh, the opportunity with the guest. So having them come in, whether it's clip-ins or something like a permanent solution like weft extensions, we want to get this bride in our salon as much as possible throughout the engagement and for several different reasons. And more so because one, it's more, more profitable, um, for the salon, but two, we build this relationship. So by the time it's their wedding, they feel like family. We've seen them so many times in the salon and it just, it just feels, I don't know. We, we, as hairdressers and makeup artists set the tone for the morning of, for the wedding. And so when we have that develop that relationship with them, it just feels like we're there celebrating family. And I absolutely love when that happens for us. So definitely cross promoting our different offerings to the bride. And that's when we create these marketing bridal kits that we send them booklets of all of the different opportunities they have, such as our bridal glow facials and um, thickening and lengthening hair through our weft extension methods. And I love getting that bride in our door as fast as possible so that we can talk about is your color and the density of your hair going to work for your desired hairstyle nine out of 10, nine out of 10 times, it doesn't, which is why now we have to talk about what is going to be our color. How are we going to set you up for success for your wedding? How many appointments do we need to have? And I never want to do hair extensions, like a permanent solution on a client that's never had them before, right before her wedding. Mm -hmm. So that's really how we kind of merge both lanes of the business and connect them together. Neat. So you do provide the coloring, haircutting, and all the things that go along with your bridal business. Yes. Yep. And even I'm, some uh, skincare and lashes too. Very cool. I want to go back to what you said a little bit ago about being affiliated with the hotels. What does that exactly mean? And, and how did you build those um, established kind of relationships and, and how do they promote you? So even though we are in a larger community. And I say larger considering I, I grew up in a town of 1400 people. So everything is bigger. <laughs> yeah. um, so our community is 143,000. And it, that sound that might sound big, but everybody still knows each other. So developing relationships with those people who are the uh, GMs of the hotels, or who own the venue and really cultivating a relationship with them. Collaboration is, is key, I believe, um, and is just another way of becoming more visible, right? Like Katie, you, you're the guru with talking about your Google ads and, and how to get more visible um, through the, that strategy. And I believe it's equally as important to develop relationships with other people who have the same target market. Awesome. What else should listeners know or do in order to really make sure they have a successful bridal business? And I'll tell you one maybe objection is I can make more behind the chair today doing everyday color and haircut appointments than if I go and do a bridal. Does your minimum cover that or are there other ways that you ensure the success long-term for your team members? So the way that I coach my team is about, it's not how many days or hours you're behind the chair. It's what you do when you're there. I also try to modernize the way that I operate my business by giving my team the option. If you want to work on the weekend, it's available to you, but we don't have to be open. So I know that some salon owners are like, I'm dying right now. Don't say that. But I mean, this is the way of the future. I don't want to work on Saturdays and 
most of my staff doesn't want to either. So I would say that for the wedding industry, at least in the Midwest, we have a peak season time, right? Spring and fall. Hardly anyone is getting married in the winter time. So to only do bridal, I think I would shoot myself in the foot, but to only be by, behind the chair during a, maybe let's say a traditional slower time of year, which is summer. So now you're able to say, we are making consistent money all year long because we're diversifying. We are in the niche industry of doing bridal and hair extensions. And at the same time, we are making sure that we understand our target market and our particular area of when clients are wanting what services. So speaking of your uh, bridal business, what are some major goals you have for your business yet this year? Oh, this is for another podcast, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I am going to continue coaching on bridal business and bridal updos. And one of the things that I, hopefully I'm not speaking too soon, is that one of the things I'd like to implement is creating signature styles where the bride can come and look at what type of work we do and almost give them, here's four options. You want one, two, three, or four, as opposed to having the client pick whatever style, or at least to wean out somebody who doesn't even fit within our scope of style. So I'm going to test that out and see if that works in attracting the right brides. You know, last year we did 62 weddings and my goal was to do a hundred. And I will say with the size of my team, 62, it was a lot. And yeah. um, I still would love to do a hundred, but at the same time, our extension business is growing really well too. So um, I'm not so mad about that. Um, we also have plans of creating a hair extension company as well. I think with the the quality, the quality of what we're seeing on the market right now is not matching our price point at least. And so something's got to change. So I just really want to pave the way with great education and support to not only my team, but even stretching this beyond refined beauty. So that's a little sneak peek of some of my goals. <laughs> I think that's amazing. And by the way, 62 weddings is a ton for the size team that you have. That is like, how, I mean, there's 52 weekends in a year. Let's just put that out there. So to do 62 weddings means you're doing multiple weddings on one day. That's a lot. So you're doing amazing. Yeah. Well, I couldn't do any of this without a team. That's for sure. And they are just rock stars and go-getters too. And um, they're just amazing. So definitely if somebody's looking to scale and do even bigger and better things, um, it's it's like that, uh, that proverb of if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Yeah. I love that. Well, what would be some final words of wisdom for owners listening today? Oh, gosh. Um, I would say get out of your own way and think as big as possible, because if you aim for something extraordinary, then you're going to get close and don't be afraid to try something new because you never know when something great will happen. Well, that is highly, highly inspirational. Thank you so much, Jennifer. It is such a pleasure to have you here. I really appreciate you sharing your insights with us. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much, Katie. And thank you all for joining us here week after week at Beyond the Technique. If you appreciate this podcast, we would love it if you could take a moment to leave us a positive review on your listening platform so that more people will discover Beyond the Technique where we're here to change the way that you are supported in your business. Until next time, everybody, have an awesome day and stay strong.